so cool how the Olympics are coming to East London this year. Do you know what I haven't seen? Muslim women playing sports. Wouldn't it be so weird to see a Muslim woman competing in the 2012 Games? There's loads of Muslim women around there. Do you reckon they play any sports? I've got absolutely no idea. Do you know what I think we should do? What? I think we should go find out and make a film about it. Yeah, yeah, OK. Tell you what, you get the camera, I'll get the volunteers. With the Olympic Games coming up, the issue arises as to how many people in Britain play sports and how many of those are Muslim. Women first competed in the Olympics in Paris in 1900. Eleven women competed in lawn tennis and golf. In the last hundred years, women have become gradually more involved in recreational sport. The Olympics were last in London in 1948. So much has changed for women in sports since that time. In 1948, only 10% of competing athletes were women. By 2008, this figure had increased to 42%, a huge change, and Bahrainian Rukeya al Ghassara became the first athlete to wear a hijab in the Olympics. Since 1948, there have been several waves of Muslim migration into Britain, from the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia. Muslim women are figures of mystery amongst the British public and press. The idea of them playing sports prompts even more questions. Are they allowed? How do they do it? Is it different from how everyone else plays sports? Here are some views from members of the public. I don't see any reason why, you know, Muslim women can't do any sport that they would like to do. I don't think there's anything that can make it difficult. I just think it's their religion, you know what I mean, the culture. Which, I mean, I'm not a Muslim myself, but I think, you know, the culture is a bit too strict, you know, we're giving them restrictions. Well, I don't know a lot about the religion, but I think they should be like any other woman. <laughs> According to the Women in Sports Foundation, Muslim women have the lowest participation rates in competitive and recreational sports. But the Muslim female community is diverse within itself. We have a range of different beliefs, cultural practices, dress codes and traditions. We interviewed people who highlighted this diversity. So what stops Muslim women getting involved? Growing up, my, I mean, both my parents never were into sports or nothing kind of like that. Uh, typical kind of Asian stereotype of, you know, fried breakfasts and um, no more exercise than maybe walking around the block every week or something. Um, and so I never kind of grew up thinking, oh, I need to be healthy, I need to be, you know, thinking about these things. To start with from their families, especially when the culture gets mixed up with the religion, that, um, well, you shouldn't be doing that, that's a brutal sport, you're going to get hurt, you're a woman, you should be worried about, like, you know, doing nice things, why don't you go and do a cookery course or something? Like, I had a lot of Asian friends and stuff, and they wouldn't, that would never kind of even be on their mind to be playing sports and things like that. Every single time I was thinking of taking up a sport, there'd be some kind of barrier. Mm. Um, like I said, whether it's because it wasn't an all-female environment, or even if it was, it was just too, too expensive, especially, you know, being a student or just recently graduating, or it was just really, really far. So how do Muslim women get involved? The sports that came out were sort of badminton, mm -hmm. cycling, which were particularly with Muslim women, so felt comfortable that they were activities that they could become involved in without changing what they needed to, to wear or what they sort of wanted, the levels of exertion they wanted to be involved in. If you ask them what brings them here, they'll say the first thing, the fact that it's women's only and that men can't enter. Secondly, the group of people that are training, because everybody's got the same mentality. They're not here because they want to learn to beat people up. They're here for, for all for different reasons, but all with a similar goal. So whether it's that they just want to learn a new sport, uh, whether it's they want weight loss, health issues, people are doing it to try and prevent diabetes or reduce cholesterol levels or high blood pressure, people who have been victims of attacks, violence, um, abuse, different, all different stuff that are wanting to build their confidence. If your body's healthier, then your mind is also healthier. So it's the kind of idea that, um, like, your energy levels are so, like, they're channeled in, much, in a much more productive way. What facilities are there for Muslim women? 
Recently, there have been many more facilities which allow women to participate, um, where it's an all women environment, so you know you can take your headscarf off, um, and you know that that's fine, and you can still actually be very serious in the sport. That's actually increased over the years. But the fees have been really extortionate. There was nowhere for me to train, so I had to try and offer something specifically to women. Um, so me and my husband sat down, we decided to split our classes completely and run women's only and men's only. My company has a big emphasis on health in the workplace. Um, so they give us kind of free access to gym every lunchtime between 12 and 2. You won't see anyone in the office. A beginner's course was starting mm -hmm. up. It was taught by a female instructor who was like a champion in her field. She had won loads of awards. Um, it was an all-female um, class. Mm -hmm. And they said that, you know, um, privacy was really respected. So, you know, you didn't have to worry, um, you know, going and not wearing your hijab. The cost was actually very affordable and they were really um, understanding of people that you know, might not be able to pay the full fees. Is clothing really an issue? They should take part in the sport but um, they need to also make sure they know that as a Muslim they have a certain way, like they have to behave in a certain way, they can't just dress immodestly, you know. They can play but they should know their responsibilities at the same time. A lot of people find that when they start wearing a headscarf for the first time, they feel as if the world is viewing them as a kind of walking headscarf, that nothing else of them is visible. And so they have to do a lot of kind of extra work to kind of show that, yes, but that doesn't mean to say I can't speak English. That doesn't mean to say I'm not modern. That doesn't mean to say I don't think, read, and, you know, I'm like you too kind of thing. So I think uh, there's a lot of interest amongst young Muslims in finding ways of being Muslim and modern in the contemporary world. In most circumstances, you can go in with your hijab, you can go in with loose clothes, um, and you can do anything in the gym that anybody else would be doing. Um, and I think people, especially in London, where there's so many different cultures and everything, no one's going to be like looking and seeing, oh, there's a Muslim woman in the gym. And I think it's quite sad that I haven't seen a Muslim woman in my gym living in London. I got very interested in in, in these garments uh, that were, uh, this is a capster that's been made by, by uh, a designer in Holland called Cindy van den Bremen. And she got interested in this issue because there'd been a lot of controversies in Holland about um, school girls doing sport wearing headscarves. And it was said that, you know, the headscarf could get caught and people could get strangled and it was dangerous and so forth. And there'd been big sort of blow ups in the press about this. Uh, and, that, and that it was said that Muslim girls should start wearing, you know, uh, polo neck sweaters and swimming hats and things like that for doing sport. And, and, and Cindy van den Bremen was a designer from a secular, non-religious kind of background. But she just felt it was ridiculous, the amount of fuss that was being made. Uh, and this was being made in such an issue. And, and she thought, surely design, I'm a designer, surely design can be used in a meaningful way to create something that mediates these tensions, if you like. She was trying to think, well, how can you make something that actually fits in, you know, visually and aesthetically with the rest of what people are wearing for sport? So again, it's going against this idea of these people are so other that we can't, that they can't possibly kind of do sports. So how can attitudes change? Girls themselves, I would just say, you've got to care about this. You've got to see it as a priority. Um, you've really got to value your health because it catches up with you, uh, you know, when you're older, you notice it. You, you can't stay up as long as you used to when you're younger. You know how it is? Mm -hmm. you, yeah, even know fasting, you realise, like, oh my gosh, this was easy before. I think once people start hearing stories of more Muslim women doing these things, then they'll start to kind of see, you know, the benefit in it and the fact that they could also be doing something like that. In the last few years, people have developed what's become known in the press as the burkini, which is a type of Islamic swimwear which covers the body so that only the hands and face are exposed. It's nice if that doesn't become prescriptive, that, some, that Muslim women should feel that they have to cover then everything if they want to go swimming. But, but to have it as an option, I think it's a very good idea. Unfortunately, there are cultural stereotypes mm -hmm. and some people might be really happy for some people in the family to be doing mm -hmm. sports, but maybe not for their young girls. And I'm not judging everyone, they're not all like that. But where that exists, they need to be politely and in a compassionate way made to realise that there's, there's no harm in it. Mm -hmm. And they will only be made to feel like that if the facilities are provided where actually girls can go and enjoy sports where that their values are not compromised. There should be like 
a, like a Muslim role model out there and we don't see many of like that and you know the media obviously they're not gonna suddenly say oh look there's a Muslim girl oh wow they always negatively stereotype us so it would be nice to see more Muslim in the media hey guys you all right? How's it going? Yeah, all right, thanks. We're just exhausted from all that filming we were doing. Yeah, it has taken ages. I know, right? But I'm quite surprised about all the things we found out. Yeah, like how there are actually Muslim women out there who play sports. And quite a variety. Yeah, I think it's due down to all the facilities that have been available for them. Let's not forget about clothing. The burkini means we can go swimming like everyone else. Mm. I do think cultural perceptions of women have held us back in the past, but I reckon that's well on its way to changing. Yeah, all the women that I interviewed, they were all like every other woman, but they're just trying to fit in sports into their everyday life. Yeah, when it comes down to it, it's just about finding the time, money and the right location. Hopefully the Olympics can change that and make sports and more facilities available for us. Mm. I still think it's going to be a while though, before sports actually becomes a common profession for Muslim women in hijab. Yeah. After all that, guys, Look, we're in a park, it's a sunny day, we have time. How about a kickabout? Don't really have the right shoes on, sorry. Oh. Let us see.